Mindsets. Exactly, mm -hmm. because uh, that's what makes this program stand out from everything else mm -hmm. that's out there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the congruency and the synergy, you can't create that without interference into self. Right? It totally so, makes sense, like what yeah. you said, you know, without knowing who you are, that eight week program, you might not get the full benefit. Of, like, the, the, exactly. Maybe in the eight weeks, you go, I don't even know why I'm here. Exactly. So you have to know first why you are there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, people, um, like, especially with my attendees right now, they mm -hmm. thought they had a business idea for this reason and they thought this certain thing was their message. Mm -hmm. And already in the first two weeks, mm -hmm. they were like, oh, I got to change my message because it's not congruent. And mm -hmm. they feel, they actually feel the power of their message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So most of my uh, attendees, um, actually they're all over the place, but they all have personal brands. Mm -hmm. um, I've got uh, a woman who owned a massage therapy um, and spa uh, business, um, and she shut it down during COVID, and so mm -hmm. now she's, she was um, enlightened to go forward as herself and spread her message. Mm -hmm. um, I've got people who are energy healers in, in my mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got uh, a gentleman who, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, who made a whole lot, whole lot of money mm -hmm. <laughs> on mm -hmm. his first business, but now he want, he's ready to face the world with his own message, and mm -hmm. he, he just doesn't know how to put that all together. Okay. So it's people generally with a personal brand, and by personal brand, um, it's where you're the face or the front of your business. And so how did you um, connect? Like you started this branding business, and what is it also called? Mm -hmm. um, and then how did you connect to people? How did people know that you know, you are doing this and then connect to you and sign up. How did you yourself kind of build this? Okay, um, so the program is called uh, the Business Clarity Incubator. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. I call it the incubator because we're cultivating, we're growing something, uh, mm -hmm. something from scratch and really applying heat and pressure to it <laughs> to make it beautiful. <laughs> Um, I, I actually uh, uh, one of the what part of the logo for um, the business clarity program is a beautiful diamond and it's reflecting all sorts of light mm -hmm. and I like to use the analogy of turning coal mm -hmm. applying heat and pressure and turning that into a beautiful reflective diamond, diamond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so how did people find me uh, I I have a website, mm -hmm. <laughs> www.trishacrampasad.com okay. um, I've got my Instagram um, and a lot of people, um, I've been fo uh, actually posting a lot and on on social media, mm -hmm. and people have basically drawn, drawn, been drawn to me. I actually haven't advertised to my program. Mm -hmm. I've only posted twice on Facebook and once on Instagram, and my attendees found me. I um, I do uh, I do now have a webinar that I offer as mm -hmm. an introduction into the program. So mm -hmm. if people are interested, I can come actually present to your community or to mm -hmm. your group. Mm -hmm. And um, I usually have a little coupon discount situation happening for those people. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as a thank you for you know attending the webinar, and then mm -hmm. that leads into the other uh, clarity program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just loved, I was had a very important question to ask you. Um, I just lost it. Hopefully it will come back. <laughs> I know, Trisha, you mentioned spirituality quite a few mm -hmm. times too, meditation and the yes. spirituality. So, I don't know how one person can do so many things. I know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> wow. I feel like here you were saying and I go, I need to sign up for like eight weeks of just introductory to myself. <laughs> then maybe I need to sign like a 52 weeks of <laughs> development program. <laughs> so, and here you are, you sit here and you're telling us, you know what, and I can understand, like, you know, obviously meditation meditation from 3.30 for two hours a day, every day, mm -hmm. that's like, you know, that's work itself. And I think so, like, I would think, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to put in the work, but without the work, you cannot get those kind of results. So obviously meditation, spirituality, and you, like, are you tying everything together? Like, I, or do, you, do you do things separately or how do you incorporate everything, all your passion, everything in one? So that's actually a really good question uh -huh. uh, because the whole idea of everything I do is convergence. Mm -hmm. um, it's bringing all of your life experience together because I strongly believe that 
everything we do and say and think is an expression of who we are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was this old 90s mentality that business is just business, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's no longer applicable. And I think we've seen that this last year, that people need connection, mm -hmm. you know? So all business is personal. Mm -hmm. Because it's our personal beliefs and perceptions that drive why we purchase something or why we choose to work with somebody in the mm -hmm. first place, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's very much a convergence of everything. I don't see my life as separate, as se separate compartments. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's all very much a wave and they all kind of play. It's like one big ocean of a, of mm -hmm. a life and it just kind of plays and intertwines with each other. You know, um, being congruent with who you are and it, it, it creates a synergy in your environment. And opportunities come your way that you would never have even imagined if you're just congruent and you just be truthful and honest to who you are. I feel like I've been li living a lie because I think all this time I've been saying nobody can define me because I know who I am. I have no <laughs> idea now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I feel like now I have no idea. <laughs> I need to search myself <laughs> to find out who I really am. No, no, no. So like, okay, so like the biggest, okay, my biggest lesson, especially uh -huh. during those five years of transformation that I've been yeah. on, it's be kind and patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I was very much a go-getter. I came from fashion design. Like I was cray cray, you know? <laughs> like I was that crazy fashion designer. Like, oh, don't talk to me if you don't have a solution, you know? That, that was me. I actually said that to Just people, get it you know? Like, get out of my way. Exactly. So I had to be, I had to learn to be very kind to myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Because when you're outwardly unkind to others, you're actually being inwardly unkind to yourself. Right? Yeah, like again, I, you know, in the very beginning, I said that, you know, what you have come to or what you have uh, like your self-awareness people live lives their entire mm -hmm. lives to find that you know what during covid i recently took a, a transformational meditation class and i felt so proud of me <laughs> it was a it was a four-week program so i so, felt so proud and i feel like oh yeah definitely what i benefited i benefited a lot i learned a lot um yeah. mm -hmm. but i'm i'm so like I've, I've, I'm lost for words that, you know what, there is, there's, it never stops. There's always so much yes. learning and so much more, you know, um, like you said, we need to be humble and all those to allow ourselves to grow into who we are. But it, I was thinking, I'm doing so good, right? Because I've, now I've done this whole way, so many transformational change, I've even become better than I was before. So, and I, one of the, one of the statements that I use that I learned from uh, my transformational uh, meditation was um, every day and everywhere I'm becoming better and better and better. So I use that now. I write yes. it down all the time. So uh, like but when I see you, I'm like, holy, I need to get a whole lot better. You need to do more. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot better and better, better, better and better. <laughs> so, okay, I want, you know, I'm really interested in the spirituality part mm -hmm. of your journey. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I can, we can come back to how that ties yes. into the business. We can talk about it again, mm -hmm. but I really want to, yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. I think I'm doing this for me so much more than, for, like, uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> you know, okay, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll be very honest. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time where I actually stopped meditating, and it went on for a couple of years. Mm. Because I couldn't sit with myself. So were you meditating before that, and this is like a change that happened? Yes, it was in... It was in my early 30s. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sit with myself. I just, and I think that, that again is that incongruency that we have, you know, that you, you can't sit there and bear your soul just even to yourself. Trisha, I'm going to interrupt you and I'm mm -hmm. sorry that even this is going to be probably very personal, but are you, are you be okay to share what was happening in your life at that yes. time? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so that was actually what led me to my big turning point where mm -hmm. I just felt so unhappy with my life. Mm. You know, uh, I was uh, getting such great wins, you know, uh, with my business, like opportunities were finally coming to me. Um, but I personally was like, I, I thought of my business as so much work and I, I couldn't sometimes even like bring myself to walk over to my studio and do the work, you know, it, it was so incongruent with who I was. Now, I, I want to take you back, actually, probably to my early, my early preteen years, um, because my journey into self-development 
started back then. Mm -hmm. um, when I was 12, no, actually I, I think I was like 10 and a half and 11 years old, I, I was diagnosed with something that people consider incurable and it still is today. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a skin disorder, it's called vitiligo, and I'm happy to share about it because mm -hmm. the more you can share, it empowers mm -hmm. other people, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have any qualms with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I very specifically remember uh, the day, the, the moment that news was, de was delivered to my mom and I. Mm -hmm. um, I ha what had happened prior to that is I had fallen at school and I had a, sc a scab around my knee. It was a pretty bad fall and it, was like, it took a, a while for that scab to finally fall. And then when the scab fell off, it left some discoloration around my knees. Mm -hmm. And um, so we just thought, okay, it's just a scar, and over time mm -hmm. it's gonna, it'll be mm -hmm. fine. And then that's, that, that, that discoloration started to grow around mm -hmm. my knees. Mm -hmm. And so my mom was like, okay, we should probably get this checked out because it's not normal, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so we went to the doctor, they ran tests, and then we, we went back. And um, I remember that moment very clearly. Um, I remember the doctor's name and all of that. And we walked into his office, and my mom was was there, and he he started to walk over to us. And I guess he already knew what he was going to say to us. Mm -hmm. But you know, he you know, back in the day, family doctors they were like part of your family. You know, mm -hmm. like you grew up, they, they were like uncle and auntie to you. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was very much like that to us. And I remember that very specifically that he was already apologizing. He hasn't even told us what was going on yet, but he's already apologizing. He's like, hey, Kay, I'm so sorry, you know, this is, and, and I could even see him like starting to tear up and mm -hmm. all of this emotion around him mm -hmm. got my mom emotional and she mm -hmm. started crying. She didn't even know what she was crying about, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember watching this drama unfold between the two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is going on, <laughs> like, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then he says, oh no, she's got vitiligo and, you know, it's inc incurable, she will never, you know, this is, it's, she's going to be marked for the rest of her life. And as he said that, and I, I saw this all unfold, I kept thinking to myself, well, who is he to give me this life sentence? Like, I, the, it, that was my exact words. I was mm -hmm. 10, but I, you know, in those moments, it doesn't matter what your age is, you mm -hmm. have wisdom, everyone has mm -hmm. that wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I had this moment of presence looking at this, well, who is he to give me this life sentence? He doesn't know what sorts of scientific inventions will happen in the future and how medicine will unfold, mm -hmm. that he's going to tell me, I'm like, I was like 10 and a half, 11, that for the next 80 years, this is going to be my life experience, mm -hmm. you know? So it was in that moment, I believe, that my sense of independent power was born, mm -hmm. right? And understanding that we do have the power because this environment is telling me one thing, but I know I'm more and bigger and better than that, mm -hmm. you know? So that's what drove me further into learning about meditation and really getting good practice. And that's what drove me into the healing realm, you know, looking at what sorts of inventions and what sorts of alternative remedies there were, you know, whether it be energy healing, whether it, it be Ayurvedic practice, mm -hmm. you know, or just movement. This industry or this field of work is saying no, mm -hmm. but where can I get a yes? Give us speechless. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, going back to that time, you were saying, so for a couple of years, you stopped um, meditating. You mm -hmm. were in, um, you know, that, that time of your life. Mm -hmm. How did you come out of that? Yeah. Your, you know, mm -hmm. how did you kind of move towards where you are now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this is something um, I think we can all you know, agree with. It's like, if you don't listen to what the universe is telling you, it's going to make you listen. It'll get louder and louder until mm -hmm. you listen, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the lessons keep repeating oh. unless you have learned it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, it's like yelling at you. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I should probably listen to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so those, those couple years where I wasn't meditating was the height of my business. Mm. Mm. And then finally, in that moment when I was presented with oh, this is your contract, there was this voice that's like, what about me? What about me? And so when I went on this walk, I said, you know, hold on for a moment. You know, hold on. 
I just need to come back to get back to you guys. They were themselves like flabbergasted that I was saying, hold on, because it was such a great contract. Mm -hmm. But when I went on that walk, I kept asking myself, if I, in my body, am hearing a voice that says, what about me? Mm -hmm. Who is that voice? Mm -hmm. Where is that voice coming from? Because I'm me. Mm -hmm. Or has it become that I have gone so far away from who I am that my soul is saying, screaming, what about me? Mm -hmm. I've become so far away from my past that I'm no longer my true identity. Mm -hmm. So that, that is what brought me back to the meditation because I was like, meditation has always worked for me. Mm -hmm. you know, it's always kept me true and it's always helped me. You know, it's always kept me centered. So I slowly, you know, you said five minutes. Well, I started with five minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gave myself five minutes, but absolute no, no distractions at all. And I just said, in five minutes, it wasn't even meditation. I'm just going to sit with myself. Mm -hmm. Just sit there and be present. And you start to hear what's going on on the inside. And then mm -hmm. I built it. And then I went to 20 minutes. And then I was like, okay, now I'm ready for the big stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I started my, my, my regular practice now, which is a couple hours in the morning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, I, and it's so because we get stuck. A lot of people get stuck, mm -hmm. even though, you know, it's uh, maybe not jiving with you, but you kind of get stuck. Like you said, you know, two years you stop meditating. And then... I mean, two years is still pretty good. People get stuck in though that for so long, yeah, yeah. Um, moving away and away and just mm. finding that outside. Yes. And thinking that mm -hmm. it, eventually it's going to, the more money they make, they'll find it. Mm -hmm. Or the more fame they have, they'll find it. I think that's often a mistake is we look for fulfillment outside of mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And... You know, we've got monks who are f absolutely fulfilled and they're living in caves with absolutely no, no distractions, no outside fulfillment, you know. But of course, that's their path and we don't have to be monks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really important uh, to say that because, um, mm -hmm. again, that's a life path that they have chosen. Yes. Um, but I think, uh, like, a really simple thing we can always start with is just listening to ourselves, like, you know, an easy exercise is, is to just journal the thoughts that are coming to your mind. Well, I'm so glad you said that as well. Just think to my, like, where would I start that? Yeah, yeah there is, you know, we talk to ourselves. Like yeah. we, and I think, you know what, Trisha, I'm just going to say, you know, when we look around mental health, you know, mm -hmm. if you're hearing a voice or you're talking to yourself, there could be some other stuff going on, right? Because yes. we look at mental health. So, so I think it's, we, it's not... Um, when you are doing a personal development, you know, there is a time when you sit by yourself, you're not having somebody else tell you that, okay, you are hearing voices, you are seeing things, or you are doing this, or, you know, all of this stuff. You are listening in the, in the quiet time. That's when you're able to go in, focus on yourself to listen to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why the morning is really important, because you haven't yet been distracted by the world. And if you can empty your mind first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. you're creating space up here. Mm -hmm. And when you create that space, it's like you're attracting better opportunities and better situations for, for your day. Mm -hmm. Because it's like it's like trying to veer through the clutter in a home. You've got to make the room first, and mm -hmm. then you can really truly enjoy being in your own space. You know, So a good practice is to just wake up in the morning and then just write for five minutes. Just write. And sometimes it's such, a, it's such a silly thing, but you'll be like, oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to write. Well, then write that down. I don't know what I'm supposed to write. Because you want to empty those thoughts so that you can find the space so that you can be still within the space. I got a um, <laughs> confession. Okay. <laughs> because confession time. Confession time. <laughs> confession time. Like, um, and I, you know what, I have read that, that, you know, writing the first thing in the morning and mm -hmm. all this stuff good for you. And I always find every excuse in my life why I'm not doing that, right? But then I knew that this is keep coming to me. It's I'm getting this a uh, visual of I'm I'm hearing this or I'm seeing this because the universe is trying to give me a message. Mm -hmm. You know where I started writing my first messages on the shower door. You know how shower door door mm -hmm. becomes mist. This is that's where I started writing my wow. messages. Yeah. You you know what that's uh, that happens for me as well. <laughs> 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 that's 
where I started writing my message. This yes. is how I began my morning writings on the shower door. There's something magical, I, I, probably yeah. you as well. There's something magical that happens when you're in the shower. I, maybe it's because we're alone, and maybe it's the ions from just being the under the water, and that flow that just brings us to our center. But I actually, yeah, I have several uh, journals in my bathroom itself, mm -hmm. because like beside beside the tub, you know, beside beside my my sink, mm -hmm. I even bought Aqua Notes, and mm -hmm. it's something you can buy oh, on nice. on Amazon, and mm -hmm. it's waterproof paper, mm -hmm. because all my best ideas come to me in the shower. <laughs> and that, that's what wow. happened to me because I, you know what, I felt like when I was in the shower, that was the, my most in present moment. Yes. I could feel every drop of the water on me, so I thought this is the best time for me to be in sync with me. This is, you know, this is where it's coming from. And I would have all this vision in the shower. This is, you know, I, and I, this is what I wanted to pursue, and I was so happy about it. But then I needed to uh, transform it somewhere, so yes. that's how I started. Mm -hmm. So, but thank you for that aqua note. Yeah. I'm yeah, gonna use it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. <laughs> I mean, even that, you know, when you said uh, first thing, write. Mm -hmm. I, we always think like of conventional methods, or I have to write it in a book. Mm -hmm. But not everything is so, you know, like this is the way you should do it. There's mm -hmm. so many different ways of what what it means yeah. of just writing, um, you know. And I think it defeats the purpose if you feel like, oh. I have to write because I should write mm -hmm. uh, first thing in the morning. Yes, uh, it should flow naturally. Exactly, and you should you should feel excited to mm -hmm. write. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that's one of the biggest aversions for people. Like in any sort of daily practice, it's like it feels like work, but nobody said it had to be. Mm -hmm. You know, find a way that makes it joyful for you. You know, you should look forward to it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I when I did start writing, the first things that were coming out of me was poetry. You know, so I was just writing poetry. I didn't know it was going to become like a daily practice, mm -hmm. but I just knew I needed to let it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I have a book that's full of poetry, and hopefully one day I'll be able to publish it. Who knows? <laughs> yes. You know, or maybe it will just be something a legacy that I leave behind. Yeah. You know, but you just don't know what your soul wants to say. I think I need to buy one of those aqua cameras once I've returned on my shower to take a picture and <laughs> put in a book. <laughs> because as soon as I'm done, that's what you know that yeah, goes. Exactly. I don't have like I don't have a collection of it. Yes. But yeah, so like you said, you started writing poetry. For the first thing for me, I started writing uh -huh. was thank you. And I think to this day, when I start my shower door writing, <laughs> it start with thank you. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, so, I'm so glad I'm not the only one I thought it was right in the shower door. So. I thought I was the only one until I was talking to somebody and they were like, oh yeah, I'm like, oh, so this is a normal thing? Yeah, They're really? like, yeah, it's normal. Okay, like, okay, okay, so okay. people do it. Okay, people do it. I know, I was kind of, that's what I said, I had a confession. I thought it was only me. It's not only you with the bright ideas. All confessions are happening here today. <laughs> So we have a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. What other tips can you give people? Mm -hmm. um, maybe people that don't even understand, you know, this self-development or looking at yourself and are, and are curious. Or, or some people that have been thinking about it just don't know, mm -hmm. you know, well, how do I actually do this or get started? Some of the tips of, you know, what maybe you could do, uh, what might work for you? Okay, so, you know, the personal development realm is fast and the people who are experts in it are varied and it can be cheap and extremely expensive, <laughs> you know. Um, so I think the first step is really to ask yourself honestly, like, what do I want? And you, it's, 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 a, it's specifically an ambiguous question because you, you may, you may, a lot of us have been living conditioned lives, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, like parents who told us that we have to achieve certain things, you mm -hmm. know, we've got our work who says, you know, you've got, a, you've got all these deadlines and this mm -hmm. is how you're supposed to behave. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got friends who have a spe special expectations of mm -hmm. our relationships, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and of course family, mm -hmm. you know, so I think the, f the first thing you need to do, honestly, is just, like I said, is to be quiet with yourself and just learn to sit with yourself for five minutes, then ten minutes, and just allow, honestly, whatever's going to come up to come up, because it's been stifled for so long. Just let it come up, and you don't have to necessarily do anything about it or do anything with it. Just let it come up. and. Um, you know, I have a lot of my clients go do something called a wandering exercise. 
and it's just to sit there and put some lovely music that just makes you feel like you're like truly getting into yourself and just sit there and music that can just make you lose yourself a little bit when you lose yourself it's not that you're losing your own identity you're shedding all these other things that have been conditioning you mm -hmm. and you just come back to your center and you can just simply ask Um, where am I going truly? Do I feel right with where I am right now? You know, you don't have to do a formal meditation. Just a simple wandering and it first into self is a good place to start. And then once you start to get some answers, and you know, maybe at first you won't get an answer, but listen to your body, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes an answer will come in feeling heat in your ears, mm -hmm. you know? Does that heat, ask yourself, is that an emotion? Is it anger or is it excitement? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you might feel a ball in the pit mm -hmm. of your tummy. You know, is that like an obstacle? Or is it, do I feel this because I'm feeling guilty or I feel bad about something? And is it, what am I feeling bad about? Mm -hmm. Inference is just, a, honestly, a stream of questions that you can just be fully present to. And then the right person will find you. You know, that's going to guide you along your journey. And it doesn't mean that that person has to guide you your whole journey. They're there for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, very nice. Uh, you know, it's been really uh, a privilege for you <laughs> to come and listening to you uh, and hearing about your journey. So I want to thank you for coming to the studio and sharing with us your journey and, you know, how you are where you at today. Um, and also sharing some tips for the viewers um, <laughs> because it is, it starts with us and within. Yes. So thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Again, thank you so much, Trisha. Like Mina said, you know, um, I feel like I don't know where the time went so quickly. Yes. I feel like I, you know, I just want to listen. I just want to explore everything about you. Mm -hmm. oh, so thank you so much for giving us your time. And thank you for having me here. Like, honestly, it's, it's, I was just chatting with a bunch of girlfriends. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so until next time, this is your host, Meena Jay. And keep watching Mind Sense. I am your host, Sarita Chand. Mind Sense.